The current 991, as the new series is known internally, is, it goes without saying, faster and, if the driver desires, can be even more economical than its predecessor. It's also, for the first time, lighter, almost 100 kilos lighter, depending on engine and features. Some of this is due to Porsche's way of downsizing. The 2012 Basic 911 now has a 3.4-litre engine, that's 200cc less than before. The remarkable thing is that the new Carrera, at least with the automatic double-clutch gearbox, manages to stay below the CO2 emission barrier of 200 grams per kilometre. A start-stop system as standard also helps, another premiere for the Carrera. But let's move on to the important issues – engine, chassis and design. The first thing we concentrated on was the proportions and how we could optimise them. We came to the conclusion that a larger wheel diameter, a longer wheel base and a slightly lower roof would give the car an even sportier look from the side. And we said the same thing about the front view. The wider track, combined with the lower roof, gives the impression that the car is much wider. What may or may not please the fans are the new headlights. Too oval, egg-shaped, too similar to the Boxster. Almost too cute for a 911. Get behind the wheel and you soon have other ideas. The Boxer engines, 350 horsepower in the Carrera and 400 in the Carrera S, give the usual thrust and the corresponding perfect sound. A completely new chassis transfers the power effectively to the road. The front track is 5 cm wider, the wheelbase 10 cm longer. And not only the look is improved, the new longer wheelbase also offers more grip at high speeds. The car is more stable. It reacts less to disturbances, side winds and uneven road surfaces. The car is much smoother to drive. Combined with a lower centre of gravity and with the option of the tried and tested roll stabilisation from the Cayenne and Panamera, the Carrera can now zip through the curves even faster than before. The icing on the cake are the S's new tyres. Shoe size, 20 inch. If we achieve a, let us say, higher load index via the tyres, larger tyres, then this higher load index enables us to put less air pressure in the tyres themselves. And if we lower the air pressure, we get more performance. All racing drivers let a little air out of their tyres when they go onto a racetrack. And lower tyre pressure also means more driving comfort. The result is pretty spectacular. The car snakes perfectly through the slalom of cones. On the track, it throws itself willingly into the corners. The new electromechanical steering finds the ideal driving line. Driving on a limit has never been so easy. We monitor the steering and at the same time register the status of the driving dynamic and generate the steering moment. In other words, we get feedback about the car's driving behaviour through the steering. With its double-clutch gearbox, the 911 sails along. In principle, when no forward thrust is needed, the transmission puts itself into neutral. Thanks to this freewheeling function and other improvements, the automatic version of the Porsche is definitely more economical than the manual one. The manual gearbox does for the first time sport a 7th gear, although the Carrera S's top speed of 304 km per hour can also be reached in 6th. Those who own a 911 want to drive more than save. They expect ideal performance and maximum driving enjoyment. And if maximum safety can also be offered in a technically feasible framework, then all's well with the world. And precisely these expectations are fulfilled by the new 911, to an even greater extent than its predecessor. So the car makers from Zuffenhausen have achieved their goal. Everything else you'll find out at your local Porsche dealer.